Hello everyone, this is Davo from Salvas Data coming to you live from Studio 2B. Today we're going to get started on performing a Tivoli Storage Manager 6.2 installation on 64-bit Intel Linux. This slide is a brief overview of the chapters we're going to go through in order to perform RTSM installation. Each chapter will be a short recording so that you can step through them at your convenience. We hope you find these sessions to be helpful. Please feel free to contact us at info at salvusdata.com if you have any questions. On this slide we see the configuration characteristics of a VirtualBox Windows guest partition which will be used for RTSM install. The OS type is configured as Red Hat 64-bit but we are going to use CentOS for our install. The partition will have 4 gigs of RAM and it will have 40 gigs of disk. We will assign two CPUs to this partition and the network type will be modified from NAT to bridged. Some notes on this configuration. While I'm doing this on a virtual box partition, I most likely would not run this type of configuration in a production environment. Some exceptions might find me doing this for a test or training environment and maybe an archiving solution where the system performance and throughput were not critical to the design. Also, the memory settings and disk configuration for this partition would not be advisable for production, as they are configured minimally for demo and training purposes. And so without further ado, we're going to jump right on into our installation, and we're going to begin by opening up VirtualBox. This is their introduction to the VirtualBox Machine Wizard. Just click on Next to continue. At this point, we create the VirtualBox Machine definition by assigning an operating system type, a version which is 64-bit Red Hat Linux, and a name for the partition. Click Next to continue. On this screen, we adjust the default memory configuration from 512 meg of RAM to 4 gig of RAM. In a live production environment, we would most likely start off with 12 to 16 gig of RAM depending on requirements and go up from there. Press Next to continue. Now we can continue by creating the virtual disk volume for the new guest partition. Click on Next to continue. I will use the default option of dynamically expanding storage, although in a production environment I would probably use a fixed storage size for performance reasons. Once we have our storage type defined, we can then go forward and accept the default location of the file, and I'm going to modify the size from 8 gigabytes to 40 gigabytes. Click Next to continue and you're presented with a summary for the virtual disk. Click Finish and you're presented with a summary for the virtual machine. Click Finish to go back to the main menu. Now that we're back to the main menu within VirtualBox, we need to review and modify some of the guest partition settings before we actually start this partition. Select the system option location on the left side of the settings menu and remove the floppy from the system. Note this step is optional and most systems today don't even have a floppy. I then select the processor tab above and increase my CPU count from 1 to 2. Note that this step is optional and will vary based on the hardware that you're working on. Now I select the storage tab on the left hand side and I assign a bootable ISO image which I will use for installing the operating system into the guest partition. By the way, to be more specific, I am using a 64-bit version of a Red Hat variant called CentOS version 5.5 for my install of TSM, and no, this is not an IBM-supported configuration. Moving down to the Network tab on the left side, I will modify my Network Attached to option from NAT to Bridged. This step is very important, and without the change, the TSM clients will not be able to communicate with the TSM server. The last change to the new guest partition will be the addition of a shared directory 
from the host system into the new guest system we created. This shared directory is a pre-existing directory on my host system with the TSM installation code. This convenient feature saves me a lot of time by not having to FTP or copy any install code into the guest partition. It also saves me disk space within the guest machine as well. At this point I specify the location of the folder I want to share to the guest partition and I give it what I call a friendly folder name where I specify names with no spaces in them. I have seen where this has created access problems to the Linux guests. I also make the shared folder read only so that I don't accidentally delete any installation code during my install process. Hooray! We're done creating the guest partition with all of its customizations. From here I can click on the green arrow labeled Start and as you can see I am presented with the Grub bootloader which confirms that my CentOS boot disk image is bound correctly to the guest partition. As I mentioned previously I would not be using this type of configuration and settings in a live production environment but they are more than adequate for our TSM training sessions. We hope that you were able to follow along with our first session chapter 1 and 2 and that you found it to be helpful. The guest partition that I created will be used for the following training sessions. You may want to have yours prepared for Chapter 3, where we perform the 64-bit CentOS installation into our new guest partition. If you have any questions on this chapter or our training sessions, please feel free to contact us at info at salvasdata.com. This is Dave O. Thanks for listening to our Studio 2B sessions. Stay tuned for our upcoming IBM training sessions in TSM, Tivoli Workload Scheduler, and other IBM products. Have a great day, and we'll see you soon.